Hello Info Person, this is Anton, and it's time for more updates from the iconic James Webb Space Telescope. More incredible images, more intriguing discoveries, and a few unusual mysteries that we cannot explain. And also at least one major glitch. But as far as I know, it's been resolved completely, with the telescope now operational once again. And so let's discuss what the telescope discovered in the last few weeks, and if you'd like to learn more about previous discoveries, check out one of the videos in the description. And let's start with this really beautiful image you see behind me. The image of the nebula containing a lot of ice. In my notes, I actually named this the Nebula of Ice. And this is a part of what's known as the Ice Age project, where the telescope is essentially trying to discover all sorts of different ices in our galaxy in order to see how planets and stars evolve. And here, this is a dark molecular cloud known as Chameleon 1. It's about 630 light years away from us. And the reason we can see it is because one of the stars that you see right there is bright enough to illuminate some of this gas, which then reflects the light visible in the infrared. And what we're seeing being reflected are actually tiny ice particles. In this case, it's not just water ice, it's a lot of other elements. For example, things like carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. But even contains a lot of other stuff, such as sugars and simple amino acids. And here on Earth, a lot of this brought water, but it also brought a lot of molecules needed for complex life very likely delivered by various comets and various asteroids. But trying to figure out where all this originally came from is essentially what this mission is trying to do. And the observations here already discovered a lot of different stuff. Even prebiotic molecules such as methanol, which means that a lot of the complex molecules might even form way before any planets and way before any stars. Although when it comes to certain sulfur-bearing molecules, they actually found a lot less than expected suggesting that either some of them are produced in some other way, or maybe a lot of them are hidden as something else, something for example like soot, that's a little bit more difficult to detect. But either way, some of the complex molecules that we are made out of were quite likely created before the solar system and before planet Earth, at least according to the study and the images that you can find in the description. Then there was this co-observation of the object known as Chariklo. The unusual asteroid-like object, or more specifically a centaur, that seems to possess two sets of rings. And during the observations in October of 2022, this is what the telescope was able to observe. It's a passage of Chariklo in front of a distant star. We refer to this as occultation. And in this case, as expected, there was a kind of a double blink as the rings passed in front of the star, blocking the light in the process. And even though the passage was really quick, with the actual observation only producing tiny dips, the spectrum of light detected allowed the scientists to determine what all of this is made from. And it basically seems to be water ice, possibly mixed with some kind of a dark material. And because this object is actually so far away from us, it's past the orbit of Saturn, even though it's 250 kilometers across, it's still extremely difficult to see it. Which means that this is as good as it gets. And completely by accident, while doing another observation, or actually trying to observe another asteroid, the scientists using James Webb discovered a never-before-seen asteroid that was only about 100 to 200 meters across, the smallest asteroid discovered in this region. But this was a lot closer in the main asteroid belt, and is actually a type of an asteroid that the scientists are always trying to look out for. These are small enough that they're usually not discovered by a lot of modern telescopes, but are large enough to cause a lot of damage if colliding with planet Earth. And so the scientists are trying to find better ways to try to find even more of these rocks because there are probably thousands if not millions of them still hiding in the asteroid belt. But this discovery was really unexpected and implies that James Webb can actually serve for this purpose as well. It might be able to detect a lot of asteroids completely by accident while observing other objects and might have already seen quite a few of them in some of the previous observations as well. And so I'm sure in some of the future studies, the scientists might go through all their data and find some of these hidden objects. But for now, this is just a pretty cool, unexpected discovery. Another unexpected discovery was from a planet known as Het P18b, a planet that orbits its star really closely and is basically a gas giant similar to planet Jupiter, but extremely hot. Now here the scientists were expecting to find certain elements in the atmosphere, and we're also expecting this planet to lose a lot of atmosphere, producing a really long tail. But even though they expected to find methane, this planet for some reason contained no methane inside and had a very small tail made out of escaping helium and water. Once again implying that a lot of planets out there are just very different from what we expect them to be and potentially have properties that we still don't understand. Although a much more exciting observation when it comes to planetary objects was the star system I briefly mentioned in one of the previous videos. 
a baby star located 32 light years away from us, only 23 million years old, known as AU Microscopii, one of the closest baby stars to planet Earth. And because it's so close to us, the telescope in this case is actually able to see some of the details of its disk, being able to analyze the dust and the particles on the inside, and in the process discovering that it seems to be a little bit brighter than expected, and is also a little bit closer to the star than expected as well. But it also contains a lot of fine dust that can generally scatter a lot of the light. And because of this, there's maybe just not enough radiation pressure from the star itself to blow the dust away just yet. The star has to become a little bit more powerful first. At the same time, it seems to contain a lot of fast-moving clumps, with the cloud also being accelerated by something else. Which suggests that maybe there's some kind of a planet-like object within the disk, interacting with the material, producing all of the clumps and the extra acceleration. Although it's not visible in this image just yet. But because this object is relatively close to us, I'm sure there are going to be so many more discoveries in the next few months. These are just some of the preliminary discoveries from the first observation. There are also some intriguing observations of a somewhat unusual brown dwarf known as HD 1946-7b. In this case, this is not a planet, not a star, it's something in between. An object that never got to become a star, but is still pretty hot and pretty massive. And this one is particularly interesting because it's a T-type dwarf the coldest and the least luminous brown dwarf object with the average temperature of about 1000 Kelvin. Although their actual color and their actual look is probably something similar to this. They're basically magenta and not brown. And they're also extremely rare. Only about 400 are known so far. But this one has a sun-like partner that's surprisingly old as well. Both objects are potentially over 9 billion years old, suggesting that the central star might become a planetary nebula within the next few hundreds of millions of years. Stars like this usually live about 10 billion years, so it seems to be close to the end of its life. And this brown dwarf that's up to 80 masses of Jupiter could go through some major transformation when all of this starts to happen. As a matter of fact, what I'm actually wondering about is whether it could potentially absorb enough mass from the star as it's essentially expelling its outer shell to eventually acquire necessary mass to begin fusion and to turn into a star itself. It's a pretty big speculation, but that's a question that kind of crossed my mind when I read about this star system. But we'll definitely be hearing more about different brown dwarfs this year, because so many investigations are planned for the next few months as well. And then of course we had quite a lot of discoveries coming from various distant galaxies, including some of the beautiful pictures like the one you see right here. For example, a thorough analysis of distant galaxies discovered that even early galaxies were already quite diverse in terms of shapes and in terms of sizes. Suggesting that the galactic evolution happened really quickly and the complexity of galaxies was something that established very quickly as well. There was also another confirmation for age and distance of one of the most distant galaxies discovered so far. This is at a redshift of about 12, when the universe was about 367 million years old. And so by using a separate technique that measured the redshift of another element, the scientists definitively determined its actual age. Once again suggesting that previous discoveries coming from other studies are very likely correct as well. One of the discoveries was at a redshift of 20, but I'm sure we'll learn more about this in some of the future studies. On top of this, the scientists discovered a very interesting galaxy that seemed to be extremely Milky Way-like, but existing at a time where it's essentially still assembling. Or it's basically still growing by combining a lot of smaller galaxies into one. Which of course collaborates how we understand the Milky Way formed as well. This galactic group is currently known as CGG Z5, because it was found at the redshift of 5. Here's what the actual image looks like. And the total mass of all of these galaxies is extremely similar to the Milky Way. And so this definitely provides a lot of evidence for how we believe galaxies do form, or at least did form in the last 10 billion years, with a lot of these merging groups serving as progenitors of future massive galaxies like the Milky Way. But while exploring a lot of other merging galaxies in the early universe, the scientists did discover something they did not expect, or at least something that they cannot explain just yet. They discovered some unusual infrared light that was actually previously invisible to the Hubble telescope, but is definitively visible to the James Webb. And whatever is producing this light does not actually make sense. At first the scientists thought that maybe this is coming from the central black hole or from the colliding black holes, because these are two colliding galaxies. And because this is emitting about 70% of all of the light coming from this galaxy, it would of course make sense for this to be really massive and really powerful. But in this case, the location is really strange. It's not in the center of the galaxy. It's not where you would expect to find the central black hole. You can see in this image that it's kind of away from anything important. 
Yet it is a really large object, approximately 570 light years across, even though both galaxies are about 65,000 light years across, or about 2% the total size. So maybe this could be some kind of a very large starburst region, where suddenly due to the collisions, a lot of stars started to form all at once, producing all of this infrared light. This is something that's often expected from a lot of galactic collisions. But the problem in this case is that, well, because all of this is hidden by huge amounts of gas, no other light is going to be escaping this region anytime soon. And so it's impossible to tell what's happening on the inside. If this is a star forming region with a lot of stars, the ultraviolet light produced by these stars is unfortunately invisible, making this a pretty exciting new mystery and something that the scientists are probably going to be investigating in future studies. Although in this case they also found 12 smaller sources of mid-infrared light located around this central point, so some of these could be hints to what's going on here and could guide scientists to the final answer. But definitely not yet. But when studying distant galaxies, the scientists were also able to find a lot of other intriguing structures such as potential clusters, or extremely small circular structures inside various distant galaxies that are very likely globular clusters. Clusters containing millions and millions of stars, but clusters that seem to be much clumpier and much denser than anything we have today. And some of these clusters seem to be anywhere between 1 and 4 billion years old, and so much younger than anything in the local universe with some of them showing very specific colors and also being located in very specific regions of their host galaxies, which may actually serve as an explanation for how these objects form. Even today it's still unknown how these clusters form even in our own galaxy, and because there are nearly 200 of them in the Milky Way, understanding their origin can actually help us explain the origin of the galaxy. Although in this case, at least two of them seem to be quite metal poor and had intermediate age about 2 billion years old, and seem to be associated with a satellite galaxy that's being absorbed by a larger galaxy known as Sparkler, something that the Milky Way galaxy has done in the past as well. But because this particular galaxy is only about 3% the mass of the Milky Way, by itself it's probably going to be swallowed by something even larger with time, which kind of shows us at least some hints to how galaxies might have evolved early on, but there are still a lot of unanswered questions. And last but not least, there was a small glitch on the telescope earlier in January a software glitch that disabled the near-infrared imager for approximately a couple of weeks. But the telescope was not in danger, and the engineers were able to resolve all of the issues with the telescope resuming operations as of early February. And so at the moment there is no indication of any potential danger, and James Webb seems to be doing really really well. Which also means that there are going to be a lot more discoveries coming in the next couple of weeks, and we're going to be discussing all of them in the next video. And until then, thank you for watching, check out some of the previous videos in the description below, Subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt featuring James Webb Telescope in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.